Let's welcome in the president of the Cleveland Browns, Alex Shiner, joins us on what has been a very busy week out into Berea with the unveiling of uh, their evolving logo. Alec, welcome to the show. Jimmy, how you doing? I am doing good. Um, I want to tell you, I, I like the brown face mask. I really do. I, I think it's going to be, I think it's unique, um, and I like it. I like it on the orange helmet. Yeah, I think we feel comfortable with where we landed, and I think our fans do too. I, I think there's probably two elements of it. There's the element of kind of what the new logo looks like, and then the uh, the hype around it. And I'd say this, I think this will stand the test of time. The orange is more vibrant. We've got the brown face mask. It gives it toughness. And then, like I've said before, the uniform will be a kind of a more revolutionary than evolutionary, and that'll be a lot of fun. Now, tell me this. When you're thinking of doing this, and of course, this wasn't just done a couple of weeks ago. I mean, you have to really inform the NFL that you're thinking of making these changes. Commissioner Goodell last night when he was speaking down in Canton said that he approved and had to approve everything that you were sending down the pipe at him, the logo, the helmet, the changing of the shade of orange on the helmet, uh, the, the, the new uniforms that are coming up and will be unveiled on April 14th. But as you well know now, in your, in your period of time here, Browns fans are truly very sensitive about the look of their uniform, about that helmet, and how it remains without the logo. And I know that you are very sensitive to this and take this into great consideration as you make these kind of, you know, this makeover. Yeah, we, we think of ourselves as stewards of the organization. So these aren't our decisions. These are what we're trying to do is make the decisions that we think our fans would want us to make. So we start the process two years ago by talking to our fans. They don't know we're asking them about uniforms mm -hmm. and the logo, but that's really what we're asking them about. How much permission do we have to change? And it came back that it meant a lot to our fans that we had, we're the only team in the NFL whose helmet matched its logo. Mm -hmm. yeah. We spent a lot of time looking at potential other logos. We did. Um, but none of them felt right, and I don't think our fans would have accepted it. When it comes to the uniform, we felt like our fans were ready for us to evolve more quickly, and, um, and I think you'll see that. But you're right, Jim, we're, we are very sensitive to what our fans care about. On the other hand, we also know that any change, no matter how small, the immediate reaction will be different than the long-term reaction. Absolutely. You know, one time I was talking to a couple of the equipment guys uh, that, you know, get a look at the uniforms and, and, you know, get the team ready and get the uniforms ready each and every week. And they said they were amazed at the amount of mail, for instance, or telephone calls to the switchboard out in Berea. They'll get, if a fan or a group of fans notice or detect that maybe the orange stripe on the pant is a little bit wider or thicker than it was in the years past. They, are, they say it's unbelievable how particular people are about the Cleveland Browns uniform. I'll tell you, I think it's in some ways it's a no win because yeah, right. everyone has their own opinion and it's amazing to me on Twitter as well how many fans every week will request that we wear certain uniforms without understanding that the league establishes our uniforms well in advance and it's not like every week we can just kind of change what our helmet is. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me this, when you go about and start to make the uniform change, when you decide, okay, maybe we're in the market to change our look and put a new uniform together, how do you go about that? Who do you meet with? How many different designs do you look at? Well, you start with, um, like I said, kind of talking to your fans through focus groups and surveys. And you start building up, okay, this is what our fans care about. This is what this city is about. This is what this organization is about. And so all the things we talk about, like if you think of our new helmet logo, the toughness, the vibrancy, if those are things we want to reflect, then we go from there. And what we do is we go to Nike and the NFL. Mm -hmm. And we say, here are the five things that we think this organization is built on and where we want to go. And then they will start designing various logos or uniforms. Then we'll sit down and we'll say, we think you're missing this, or boy, we think that's really cool. And everything will tie back to the kind of that brand foundation. Um, so the unveiling of that is coming up on April 14th, and that's a day that Browns fans will have circled on the calendar as they get a look at what the Browns' new uniforms are going to look like. Alec, uh, the commissioner was in Canton last night, uh, and in a long-form kind of a 
town hall type of setting, meeting being questioned by the great Hall of Famer, Dan Deardorff, from that area, incidentally. Um, but he had some very nice words to say about Jimmy Haslam. I mean, very, very, you know, fond of Jimmy, said that we're lucky here in Cleveland to have him as the owner of the Browns, that it is, uh, there are no quick fixes in the NFL, uh, but that he's on board with the way that Jimmy is running the organization, and he's proud to have him in the league. Very, very high marks from the commissioner. You know, I think uh, we recognize that the first two years um, have been a bit rocky. I mean, I, and I think Jimmy has said publicly that there's a steep learning curve for a new owner. I've been fortunate enough to be around NFL owners and NFL franchises for about the last 15 years. And the one thing I can say with tons of confidence is we have a great owner here because he gives us all the resources we need, he holds us accountable, and he asks the right questions. And I think anyone who spends time with Jimmy will understand just how passionate he is and just how smart he is. And I think so when the commissioner says, those things. I think some people can be cynical about it. Mm -hmm. What I would say is he's just gotten to know Jimmy. And once you get to know Jimmy, you'll come away very confident that the Browns are in good hands. And that's, that's why I feel. I worked for a really, really good owner um, who will be in the Hall of Fame one day. And I can't tell you how great it is to work for Jimmy as well. I mean, I think he's, he's a visionary. He's an incredible worker. And he cares about people. So I feel, I, don't, I think the commissioner is right on. And if, uh, if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't have come here. I moved my family because I believed it, and nothing since that time has changed my opinion. Alec, tell me this, uh, and I know we're in phase two of uh, the stadium getting its facelift, and I think a lot of people really liked phase one and the end product of that. That was a, that was a great look inside the stadium. The video boards were exceptional. They were top of the league as far as the NFL is concerned. I mean, it, and it definitely needed updating, and, uh, and, it, and it was fantastic. The sound seemed to be bigger, so whatever you did with the configuration of the field, and I don't want to go architectural here, but I mean, it really worked because the, you know, it, it, it really made the place very, very loud and intimate, I think, at least for the Browns when they were in there, and I thought that was great. But I know Phase 2 is going on, and, and tell us what that is and how that's going. Well, I always say that Phase 1 was about the outside of the building, and Phase 2 is really about the inside. And so if you think of our concourses and our club areas and our suite areas and the lights and all of those things, they haven't been touched in about 16 years and we will retouch every aspect of the stadium. Um, so number one, it'll just feel like a different stadium when you walk through those concourses. And number two, we'll introduce new chef concepts throughout the stadium. I thought when, when we got here, one thing I liked was we had such good local chefs in the club areas. One thing I didn't like was they were only in the club areas. And I thought all of our fans should get to take advantage of such great chefs and restaurant concepts. Um, so that's phase two, and I, I just walked the stadium yesterday, and it's, it's interesting. It's like a house. Once you start removing things and demolishing walls, you realize, boy, we have a lot more space than we thought. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we streamline the interior of the stadium, it really will feel like a different stadium, just like last year it felt like on the field. Yeah. Um, what did, take me, or take the fans inside in the building in Berea right now and football wise and 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 I know everybody has got their nose to the grindstone it, it, to the fans it seems like a dead period because free agency hasn't started yet and the draft is still well on down the road as we just finished up the combine this week in the early part of the week but right now what is going on in that building uh, as they put their plan together is it to put the plan together that when free agency when the whistle goes off at four o'clock on March 10th they're ready to go and they've got people that they want to go right to to get a deal done yeah, this is, uh, this is one of the busiest times for an NFL organization because you're preparing for two different things on the football side, for free agency, like you said, but you're also preparing for the draft because these things can link up. I mean, if you, if you have a feeling that one position is very strong in free agency or the draft, it might impact your decisions in the other area. Um, and so what goes on in the building in weeks like this is Ray Farmer and the scouts and then – the coaches as well all get together and they really just start looking at every single player that might be available and they look at our roster and so it's interesting the, the NFL season is a busy time 
But there's not much you can do once you get to the NFL season. This is the time where you refurbish and, and kind of renovate your roster so you go into the following season. Um, on an update on training camp now, you came out the other day in the, uh, in the media meeting, or the meeting with the media, on the day that the logo was unveiled. And uh, you also confirmed that training camp is in Berea this summer. I mean, there is no, it's, you're not going to go anywhere else. This summer, you're in Berea, right? That's correct. Now, what about the and in, in the possibility still lingers down the road in future years that uh, you might go to a different location? You may be there for a couple of weeks, or if not, the whole camp. That's right. So when we started the process this year, um, the main thing we kept in mind was what's best for the football team. Uh, Coach Patton had talked about getting the football team away, getting everyone a bit secluded. We looked at various places, but we always had the threshold question being, do they have the facilities we need right. to be successful? For this summer, the answer is no. Um, but that doesn't mean that over the long term there might not be another answer. The other thing we've said is that we'll always have a presence in Berea. Mm -hmm. So even if we end up doing a long-term deal in another location, there'll be open practice in Berea for part of the summer. And then lastly... Last year we had Family Day in Akron. We thought that went really well. Yes. We're still thinking about where to have our Family Day this year. Yeah, that was a good day down there in Akron. Final point to you, Alec, and uh, I watched uh, Mike Pettin with great interest during his meeting with the local media and the national media at the Combine. And once again, uh, Mike Pettin has that rare ability that a lot of coaches struggle with sometimes, that rare ability to win press conferences because he's blunt and he's to the point and he's right on the mark. And I thought he did it again in Indianapolis. And I thought, you know, he took some of the, you know, cynicism that I really thought that, you know, the Browns were going to face down in Indianapolis because of what had gone on since the end of the season. And I think he took a lot of the air out of that. Yeah, the, the thing about Mike is, He's exactly the same guy we interviewed when we interviewed for head coach candidates. He was just like that when we interviewed him. He's blunt. He's funny. He's smart. Um, he's not afraid. And so it's nice that people get to see that from him, uh, but it's not surprising to us. And that's how he is every day in the building, um, and that's why we have so much confidence in him. Alec, thanks for your time. Good to have you on the show. Jim, thanks for having me.